Today's Sunday, January 23rd, 2022. My name is Alex, and you're listening to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast powered by Incorporating Associates. That's right. It's Associates. Incorporating Associates. Nothing more. Nothing less. <laughs> you know, we got to honor our namesake. You know, we have to do right by our own namesake and incorporate associates any way we can. That's how we get stronger. That's how we stay strong and build together. That's what it comes down to. In corporate, at least, you have to make alliances. You have to be flexible. Your social skills have to be such that you're able to shake hands with those you perceive to be the opposition. I mean, if you really believe someone is the opposition, then this may not be the right field for one of the two because there is no room for opposites. There is no room. There could only be good. There could only be good. There can't be bad. Why? Because people fight to be better than one another. And that's just a necessary condition to capitalism, to innovation, to the corporate life. Now, I get some people are going to extremize positions and say, oh, well, because we're better, folks are absolutely bad. They're wrong. But I would caution you not to entrench yourself into these notions of good or bad. These notions of uh, absolutes, absolutism. Hey, in some instances, it's warranted. I get it. If somebody is out to do you wrong, if somebody is out to do you dirty, hey, (laughs) I might advise you to put in work and do that dirt first. Strike first and die last. <laughs> that's, that's the name of the game, ultimately. But if there is a way for you to shake hands and not have to worry about looking over your shoulder, granted, you do want to have contingencies, always, always. Even if you are shaking hands, you want to be sure that you have some kind of measure in place in case folks decide to renege on an agreement, you know, go back on a deal, just fuck you over. Obviously, nobody wants to be left holding the bag. Nobody wants to get fucked over, over some bullshit that could have been resolved with a couple extra contingencies, like dotting your I's, crossing your T's, It should be standard operating procedure. Nothing special. As far as building team goes, as far as team building and building your teams go, you absolutely want to be a leader, never a follower. Although, To some extent, you will fill that role. You will serve your crew as a follower. But it won't be just to follow. It's going to be to support. So even then, you're still a leader. You have to be knowledgeable. You have to be expert. You have to be professional in the area that you're working in and in that way you're a leader where other leaders can count on you to do the kind of work required everyone is key everyone fills a role in the team so it ain't just your team, it's everybody's team.
Now, how you choose to frame it to others outside of your organization, I mean, shit, that might be your team. And if your team really is that flexible, they might just be able to uh, to cover and improvise what needs to be when the time comes. I mean, if you have a uh, very capable roster of individuals, they won't mind at all that you put yourself out as the leader, that you put yourself out as the face, as the voice. You can find an example here with yours truly. I'm not the leader, T-H-E-E leader, right? But I'm a leader amongst leaders. Folks come to me whenever they have issues. And if I have issues I can't resolve, then of course I'm going to those I trust, to those in my circle. Because when you get down to it, your team can't have just one leader. I mean, that's a point of contact that becomes critical. That becomes a point of contact that becomes indispensable. And sometimes situations, the kind of situations that you'll get in in corporate at least, the kind of situations that you will find yourself inside of corporate at least, are enough to draw a leader away for an extended period of time in which a crew, a team, has to be able to operate autonomously, independently, without a quote-unquote leader, without a head. Again, there's a difference between having a face, having, uh, you know, the, the image of a head, like a CEO, right, as some sort of chief executive that takes the public head on that will take any heat, that will catch any flack, that will address any conflicts, any situation that should arise in the course of business and will do so professionally. Otherwise, it's just business as usual. I mean, if you're doing your work right, and you planify right, there won't be need for much public relations. You can stay out from up under the radar and you won't end up on anybody's uh, watch list, shall we say. But that takes planning, that takes commitment, that takes dedication, that takes an Eye for detail and attention for minutia. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta you gotta get in the trenches. Sometimes you gotta get in the weeds. I mean, to be an expert, to know your field forward and back. And be familiar with it as if it as if it were your arena, as if it were your home, as if it were your comfort zone. I mean, you have to grow comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's been said time and time again. And that in itself is a comfort zone. Being uncomfortable always. I mean, motherfuckers who can rise to the top, right? The cream of the crop. And continue growing. I mean, they're on a whole other level. You would be unstoppable. Necessarily unstoppable. That takes training. That takes time. That takes dedication and conviction on your part. I mean, you want to be a consummate professional. Professionals aren't made overnight. Managers are. 
managers are made overnight and they're just managers by title. They aren't really professionals by trade. Some of them wouldn't know what a professional is if one crept up on them and shot them in the fucking face. (laughs) But it is what it is. I mean, that's... That's the, uh, how do you say? That's the crux of the game. That's, that's the name of the game. That's the, that's the play. That's the way of the game. That's the way of life. <laughs> There's got to be a better saying for that. That's the beat of the game. That's the wave of the game. I'll come up with it. I, I mean, I, I know there's one out there. It's not like I'm going to coin a new one. Ultimately, that's what these uh, podcasts are for. I mean, some of them are going to be as a way to vent, keep things cathartic, and motivate, wake something up inside of the audience, you, the listener, which if you haven't so far, you ought to visit the Instagram page because sooner or later, that's going to get banned. Sooner or later, that's going to be taken down. Already can't post anything on it as of today. Patreon is still up, the Corporate Cowboys podcast. You can subscribe there. Help us out. Keep the operation non-for-profit. All monies received will go towards business expenses and legal fees, as always. The goal is just to keep money revolving, to keep money circulating. I mean, if you if you know somebody who's rich and doesn't know what the fuck to do with their funds, send them our way. Tell them to make it tax deductible, tax uh, tax write off. It's if they haven't already. I mean, if they're sitting on some kind of asset that they need turned into a commodity, shit, that's what we're here for. You could say it's easy, but, I mean, just because it's easy doesn't mean everybody's doing it. Not everyone knows how to do it right. (laughs) Just because it's easy doesn't mean you will do it right. Anyways, again, that implies knowledge and understanding, an eye for detail, consummate professionalism. Etc. Etc. But it's Sunday. I mean, I don't want to go. I don't want to do too much and go all out. Suffice it to say that you ought to be getting ready. You should have been getting ready yesterday, right? The saying goes should have planted that tree 10 years ago but you should have been getting ready but now you can still get ready I mean corporate will never leave corporate is a way of life corporate is the future it's going to be a corporate world order corporate runs the world baby it's just a matter of whether or not you have actualized yourself to reality a lot of people are living in a fiction a lot of people think That they can take what they got, cut, and run into the woods, into, what, start their own society, homestead, quote-unquote homestead, with what, bro? With what? Are are you going to reinvent the wheel? Get the fuck out of here. Or with what, fam? Because there's females out there, too. You're going to reinvent the wheel out there by yourself? Try to start your own family? With no modern technology, really? I mean, A, do what you feel like, but don't be willfully blind. Don't be willfully ignorant of reality. Because reality will set you straight. Reality will scare you straight. 
corporate will creep up into your life one way or another. And it's historic. It's cyclical how it moves. If you don't take an interest in corporate, corporate will take an interest in you. That's Alex, a corporate cowboy. (laughs) If you want to donate, if you want to write to us, by all means do that. We do answer questions, sometimes uh, confidentially. Um, If you would like some form of advice, professional advice. Not legal, professional, unless you get taken up as a client, but there's agreements for that. You can write to us, send us something. P.O. Box 3372. Rancho Cordova, California, 95742. There's a PayPal out there, a Cash App, a Venmo. And again, that goes towards keeping this operation nonprofit with the ultimate goal of formalizing an entity, a large one. A sort of... uh, parent corporation a sort of uh, I don't want to say a shell or an umbrella but yeah a parent corporation something to be able to uh, both steamroll because one could uh, formalize as large a corporation as you'd like You just got to have the proper mode and the means to do so. I mean, there's a lot of Fortune 500 corporations that are sucking air right now because they don't know how to modernize. Yeah, they're doing right by hiring out, hunting talent, picking it up. But they're not as flexible, they're not as agile they're whales by definition and what corporate cowboys are in essence are sharks trying to formalize something the equivalent of a megalodon (laughs) and that's funny because those motherfuckers are already extinct but I mean you mix a little fiction with reality. You get yourself science nonfiction. I mean, these motherfuckers are on the verge of cloning random ass dumb shit before they are solving world hunger. So, uh, I don't know. Take what you want from that. And that's not to say that the, uh, that the future looks bleak. The future is very gray. Corporate cowboys love working in the gray. In the gray area with gray matter, using gray markets, gray technology. (laughs) And on and on. Have yourselves a great week. Until next time.